If you're just joining our conversation, this is a conversation that is merging the continent and diaspora. And these two gentlemen, um, I think, have gotten my eyebrows going up until over all the way here. I was very nervous. Uh, Dr. Siebert, who's an executive director of Diaspora Insurance, and of course, the CEO, Jeff Matzingo, who is currently sitting in South Africa. And I was very nervous. I was nervous for the right reasons. I knew we needed to have this conversation, but it's very African. And part of it being African is that we don't, we think discussing death is, is, is taboo. It's not cultural. And then we also complicate that by saying culturally, uh, we tend to fundraise. And the problem with that is the truth, as Jeff said in the earlier um, video, is that it takes a long time to do the fundraising, to repatriate the body home. What also you brought up that I had never considered is that there is a person, a diaspora Kenyan, who has considered California home. And they could be on holiday here, but they're very clear. Should I pass away, you have to leave me to rest in California. And I've never thought about repatriation in the opposite direction. But apparently diaspora insurance and diaspora funeral cash plan does take care of that. So I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to start, start with Dr. Siebert. Give me what the policy is like, because they're sitting there saying, tell us about the policy and the premium woman. You're talking too much. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the uh, Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan, uh, like the name says, is a cash cover, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, structured in such a way that uh, it suits uh, people's needs. It's very flexible in terms of cover amounts. So we cover people up to 20,000 US dollars or pounds or euros, uh, depending on where you are. Uh, so you can cover yourself as a single person, as a family or as a group. And uh, the premiums are determined by your age and the uh, cover amount that you choose. Of course. So, so um, and on the policy, like as a family plan, so you, you're you flexible to add your your children, your spouse, or and also on top of that, like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. you unlike other uh, products which are offered uh, in the diaspora by um, the mainstream insurance companies, you mm -hmm. can't uh, cover your relatives back home in Africa, it would be in Kenya, Ghana, Uganda, but we allow that to happen because we are saving a, a unique market and we understand the needs and complexities of our market, mm -hmm. which is not appreciated by the mainstream insurance companies. So no. that's the uh, differentiating factor of the uh, diaspora funeral cash plan. The ability to cover people that are outside uh, the territories that we cover or where the people are resident. So that's another important and um, very uh, unique feature of the diaspora funeral cash plan. No, listening to you, I, I went back to the comments and I go yeah. back to this lady called Susie Dida. She said, there is probably one London-based company that I know of. And she said, I don't recall their name. She's probably talking about you, but I attended a seminar. I don't know whether you do this. It costs between 8,000 to 12,000 pounds to organize for a body to be repatriated and buried back home. She says, I'm Sudanese and live here with my mother and siblings. We tried to get my mom to take up a policy, but like many of her generation, she doesn't see the need. She says, time is also hot on our heels. This is a discussion we will be having again. Thank you for raising the topic. So clearly, um, it's also a part of the fact that we do not know. And you're right, Dr. Siebert, the, the rest of the market and the world does not have a product like this because they're not repatriating anybody. But we are Africans. We want our remains to come home. So, um, Jeff, I need to ask you this. Um, when people actually do take up the cover, because you love to talk about how many testimonials you have, which is the first thing they, they take? I mean, they look at everything you have to offer and what do they jump on? Because I might as well get, get my people to jump onto it as well. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the simplicity of the cover is uh, quite a, a, a big factor in that uh, you find a lot of people may have been rejected for life cover for one reason or the other, pre-existing medical conditions, family medical history, uh, things like that. But with us, you, it's a guaranteed acceptance policy. But I also want to touch on the comment from the, the Sudanese lady. Lady, yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's another misconception and uh, a very wrong premise of approaching insurance. Because mm -hmm. 
The concern, a serious concern, there is that mom is old and mom will die first and give us problems. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not always the case. That's not always the case. As we speak, we've got uh, 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 next week, funerals happening, burial happening in the UK for, for people who are on our cover. One is a 14 year old, the other one is a 35 year old. So reality of life is that it's not always the case that the older one. So you're talking to mom and saying, mom, you're old, now you need a police. You should be talking to mom and say, mom, any one of us can go anytime we need a family police. We need a family so, policy. Yeah, yeah, there are so many parents who have buried, buried their own children. And to God, there is no register to say the oldest ones should be prune the first <laughs> anyone can go anytime that's the reality of life and people don't realize sometimes when we talk about these things taboo as they may want to to to, pre to present it yes every day in the world barring the covid pandemic you yes. lose about 170,000 people 170,000 people die every day Mm -hmm. So if you take that down to seconds or the time we have been on this program, we have lost mm -hmm. thousands already. Yes. <laughs> and, for me and you, for me and you to sit here and think that we are cleverer than the 170,000 who died yesterday, or the, the 170,000 who died yesterday were all younger than me. That's not correct. Anyone can go anytime. The, the approach is that anyone, you need a cover. The ultimately, what will happen with this is if you take a family like that, every one of them will come to pass. And when every one of them comes to pass, there is going to be expenses. So that's what you are simply planning for. As to whether whose expenses comes first, it doesn't matter. And, so, and that's why I love the fact that you said there's a funeral um, cover. Hmm. Um, and I hear you. I mean, I'm just looking at one comment says, you know, last year, someone I knew uh, lost their son who was working in Canada. Two million was used to bring the body back. This is two million Kenya shillings. That's twenty thousand yeah, yeah. dollars. But but yeah. when you think about it, sounds about right. Canada to right. Nairobi, Kenya yeah. is not a. Uh, in, in, fa in fact, to most African countries, from Canada, it's fairly expensive. If mm -hmm. in, I I know a case to Zimbabwe, it was twenty thousand five hundred Canadian dollars. That's a lot of money to try and bring someone back home. The repatriation itself can easily eat without adding any other expenses that we alluded to before, can easily eat 10,000. Then you start thinking family travel, the cost mm -hmm. of burial on arrival, all those things would be, would be real costs that people need to face up to. But critically, critically, what people need to understand is that especially if you are taking this into a family discussion, it's not based on age that... <laughs> I, I, you know, to be honest, I hadn't thought about it that way. And thank you for raising that. For, for example, I, myself, myself is an example. I, I go take cover on the diaspora funeral cash plan for myself, for my mm -hmm. spouse and my three children. Mm -hmm. My youngest child, I took the cover the day he was born for him. The and day your he wife was you? Yeah. The, the way the day he was born, the day he got a name, we gave him, we, we put him on the police for 20,000 US dollars. Do I want my child to die and cash in on that 20,000? No. But I'm accepting as a financial advisor that at some point you will come to pass as part of his inheritance and intergenerational financial security. I will do this policy while list is young and cheaper for me as a parent doing long term financial planning for my family. That's the correct approach. Not say, ah, in my family, I think my, my parents-in-law, my own parents are the old ones. We should do talk to them about insurance. <laughs> I, I think you put the point across. Uh, Dr. Siebert, I, 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 I need to ask this. Why do I see a lot of comments about having about documentation? Documentation. Please remember, uh, Jeff and I are sitting on the continent. You are abroad. Yeah, I think what we... Um the, the problem is that uh, there's a, a dichotomy um, of um, diasporans. Um, so, some of them have got documentation, like they got the uh, necessary uh, paperwork that's needed to, to reside wherever they are, uh, like in terms of visas or permits. And then that those that don't have the necessary visas and permits to be where they are. 
So like I alluded to before that um, for mainstream um, insurance companies, um, like your local big insurance companies, probably in the UK or USA, for you to get a, a product, you have to have- um, Paperwork. The paperwork, just like opening up a bank account. So this yes. is what people are talking about this, but because um, diaspora insurance is dealing with a unique market and a niche market, and we understand the intricacies of the market that are dealing with, is, is not something that we look at. All we want to know is where they come from, those 13, national, national, um, 13 African countries. And uh, we cover you, we give you your, 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 your um, guaranteed peace of mind. Because what we want at the end of the day is to give our clients a guaranteed peace of mind. So whether you're documented or not, that's not um, an issue to us. We just want to give our clients a guaranteed peace of mind wherever they are. So this is what diaspora insurance is all about. I, I, you know, Jeff, I know you, you're itching to interject. I can hear you, but I'm thinking it's such a penny drop moment. It doesn't matter where you're sitting in the world right now as a diaspora African. You're like, Caroline, get off. Let's call these people. Because you have, you have made it clear that you are dealing with a unique need for a unique market. Yes. And as such, not governed by what the rest of the world sees as whether or not you can have a product. And that for me is, is where you win. However, I do believe without a doubt, there's going to be tons of questions. Uh, but the minute I post uh, this, this video, as this you know, conversation goes. So I'm going to task you with the job of looking at some of those questions, reaching out and letting me know when we can answer them. So I want to let you both have 30 seconds to wind this up with what you'd like any person sitting on the edge. Uh, but, but because there's somebody somewhere who's like, do I really want to do this? What, Jeff, would you like to tell the person who's, who's, who's not itching to get onto your website right now and reach out to you? Yeah, the, I think the closing remark would be thank you for listening uh, to the program. And uh, as Diaspora Insurance, we, we, we are here to save the market. This product is crafted to meet the needs of our own people. It speaks to our people's needs. And it's very, very important that people cover themselves. Uh, also accepting that it, it cover, taking a policy is, does not necessarily fast forward or bring forward your your departure date neither does not taking the policy mean that you can postpone your your, your death it doesn't work like that and uh, in as much as we all want to live in the open and belief that death happens next door i will go and pay our condolences maybe pay them five dollars or pay them five pounds one day you will be the recipient of that money the little money because to God, next door is anyone's door. Next door is anyone's door. So it's, it's not going to happen next door. One day your door will be what is called next, next door by someone. I hear you. Yeah. So uh, Dr. Siebert. Go on our website, diasporainsurance.com, and mm -hmm. you can read more information. You can get a lot of testimonials, and you can find a lot of information. But the ultimate outcome is, please, this is for you. Get covered. Get covered. Dr. Siebert. Yes, Caroline. I, I just, you know, what, what, I what would you like to leave anybody? I, I think we've given a lot of gems, but what would you like to leave them with? Yeah, I think uh, my final words are like failing, like, like they always say, failing to plan is uh, planning to fail. True. So let's plan, let, let's plan ahead. Uh, let, uh, let us put our affairs um, together um, and um, in order and uh, plan for, uh, for families, give them uh, a guaranteed peace of mind. So we encourage our, our listeners to go onto our website, um, like what Jeff has mentioned, it's www.diasporainsurance.com and read more about our product. You can even call us and uh, we can help you with uh, any questions and get yourselves covered and your families. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you both ever so much. Like I said, there will be questions and I'm hoping you're going to take note of those so that we can address them in another subsequent conversation. The, the very you. best to both of you. And I actually, I should have said this, well done on a product that is not, that even the name is not, has, is not frivolous. It's Diaspora Insurance and it is Diaspora Funeral Cash Plan. It's as simple as that. And I like the fact that it gets to the heart of the matter.
I really like that. Thank you both very, very much.